3U, functions day five, we're looking at horizontal and vertical translations. So first thing I would like to do is to compare y equals x squared and y equals x squared plus two. But since you probably don't have a graphing calculator at home, we're going to try this together if we can get it to brighten up a little bit. Okay, I have to lean over a desk here, so I hope you can be patient with me. I have it at my different functions. I would like to have x squared, and I would like to compare that to x squared plus 2. If that is centered correctly, I won't have to adjust my window, so I'm going to see. I'm going to check with a graph. So there's the first one, and there's the second one, and you can see that one is exactly two higher than the other. So we're going to draw that y equals x squared. I can eyeball this fairly well. Not bad for an old lady. Okay, and it mirrors on the other side. There's y equals x squared. y equals x squared plus 2 had that vertex 2 upwards. It would be really great for you to have a copy of this in your notes if you've got graph paper. y equals x squared and Christmas colors y equals x squared plus 2. Two. We're going to compare square root of x, and I would like to extend that. This program isn't really nice. There. Square root of x, y equals the square root of x minus 2, and y equals the square root of x plus 3. I'm going to clear, okay, the first one was the square root of x. I'm going to close my bracket, so whatever is in the brackets is being square rooted. That's a proper English phrase. Square root of x, and then we were going to, I don't recall, subtract 2. Uh, subtract 2 and add 3. Okay. Subtract 2. Remember, subtract is over on the right. The blue button's not at the bottom. And square root of x. Add 3. I assume that it's going to be centered, but we'll check it out. Graph. There's the square root of x. Square, square root of x minus 2 and the square root of x plus 3. If I can shift this over. Come on. Yeah. Be really great as well to have a copy of this. You have the square root of x up in the classroom as a cheat sheet. Square root of x is like the opposite of a parabola. The square root of x minus 2 was the second one we did. And it, oddly enough, was 2 lower. y equals square root of x minus 2. The last one we did was that y equals the square root of x plus 3. Oddly enough, it hits the y line at 3. Interesting. So it appears that if we add a number to the end of the function, 
it appears that that function will move upwards. It appears if we subtract a number, that function appears to move downwards. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Let's try something a little bit different. And again, I'd like you to be careful how you write this. This square root sign should extend all the way over. I wrote it in brackets so that what you're saying is you're taking the square root of all of x plus 2, the square root of all of x minus 3, and comparing that to the square root of x, which we already know what that looks like. So I already have the square root of x as my first function, so I'm going to change the second two. I want the square root of bracket x plus 2. So the only thing that's changed with the way I type this in is that the bracket includes the plus 2. See if that makes any difference. The square root of x subtract 3 in brackets. All right, let's hit graph and see what happens. There's our square root of x. Oh, that's different. So, square root of x. We know that already. Our second function was square root of x plus 2. It showed up right here. The third one was y plus the square root of x minus 3. And it is right here. Mr. Van Leeuwen is on line 1. There we are. y equals the square root of all included x minus 3. I'm getting the hang of this. There we go. So it seems to be different when we add 2 inside the square root sign. And this is where it's strange. When we added a number inside the function, we moved left. That seems counterintuitive. When we subtracted a number, inside the function, inside the square root sign for this particular one, it appeared to move right. Let's write a conclusion for this. If we have a function f at x, and we are going to add k. If you recall, when k is positive, so we are adding a number, like when we added 2. I always do that, don't I? When k is positive, so we are adding a number to our function the vertical translation. Is up. When we subtracted a number, or we are adding a negative number, same thing, then the vertical Translation is down. Just as you would think. Adding moves it up, subtracting moves it down. It was a little stranger, however, when we added a number inside the function or subtracted a number inside the function. 
for adding and subtracting inside the function. When we added, so something like a function with x plus 2 inserted into it, we moved it left or right. So it's a horizontal. When we added a number, strangely, the translation was left. Every time we have something horizontal, it's going to be different than what you might expect. When we subtracted a number, so we are adding a negative number, the horizontal translation, backwards to what you might think, is right. If I have a function f at x, its name is f, it is a parabola. I want to determine f at x minus 5. So we have a function that is, take my f function, replace x with x minus 5. That is from our function notation, and we know from what we looked at previously that if you are subtracting 5 inside a function, we should have a horizontal translation 5 to the right. Our function should be take the regular parabola and move it 5 to the right. So a regular parabola would be, okay, very poorly, that's better for that side, 5 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, f at x minus 5, let's actually write this in here, y equals f at x x minus 5. You check that with the graphing calculator, that's exactly what it does. We will get x squared minus 10x plus 25. That is exactly what it looks like. f at x minus 5 is take your function and move it down 5. So my function was x squared and I'm going to subtract 5. If you were to graph that uh, function, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down, it looks like that. It is a vertical translation down 5. And we know from our understanding from quadratics from last year that that is true. Lastly, 2 times the function is take your function and double it. If I did a table of values, I'm going to square those values and double them. I am going to get a function We're going to sketch the graph of y equals x minus 3 squared plus 4. First thing I'm going to look for is my parent function. That's why we have the cheat sheets up on the wall. My parent function is y equals x squared. y equals x squared I know.
I know about vertical and horizontal translations. I know that when I add a number onto the end of a function, that I have vertical change. So if it's not within the function or within the brackets, it's outside. It is a vertical change. This is a vertical translation. And because we're adding, it will be up 4. When I add or subtract a number inside the brackets or inside function, like this guy, it's going to be a horizontal change. Sorry, I'm going to call it translation. But always backwards to what you might think. So horizontal is your lefts and rights. Since it's takeaway three, it is opposite. It would be to the right three. So I'm going to take my parent function, y equals x squared. I'm going to move it to the right three. So I'm going to be looking at the vertex, because that's the easiest point to move. But all of them move. I'm going to move to the right three. And I'm going to move it up four. There is my new vertex. The shape appears to be the very same. There is my graph. And we knew from vertex form that my vertex is, in fact, 3, 4. From a horizontal translation and a vertical translation, confirming what we knew from the book. Please try course notes 24, 1, 3, 6, 7, A, B, C, D, 8, 10, and 12.